morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all doing well today. Um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I think most of you may know Daiquiri by now. If you don't, let me just explain. Uh, we were founded in Los Angeles seven years ago, where our, we still have our headquarters. Um, we've grown our footprint in Europe over the last number of years. I'm based in Dublin, Ireland, where we have a software team and our commercial development team. We have a computer vision research team based in Vienna. We've got a hardware development group based over in Battle in the UK. We have an automotive holographics team also in Milton Keynes. Um, stateside, our HQ, as I said, is in Los Angeles. We also have a, an optics research lab in Pasadena and a automotive hub in Detroit. Uh, we're about 275 employees spread across those countries and um, focused heavily in Europe and North America today. So today, I'm talking about professional grade AR. So when we talk about professional grade AR, what we're really talking about is worker capability augmentation. So it's not entertainment per se, even though you might be entertained doing your job. It's actually giving capabilities. The show here is all about superpowers. So it's about giving those superpowers to workers. And we're talking about doing that through high-precision high, high computer vision, uh, seamless software experience that can render and deliver and allow you to get content into the devices. And the devices themselves need to be suitable for workplace usage. So Wolfgang gave an overview in the previous presentation. What I'm talking about is certifications, uh, integrations with ERP systems, with common workplace software environments and tools. So in terms of our tools, our, our wearables are designed for the workplace. We released our flagship product, Smart Helmet, about a year ago to, to general release. Uh, we're currently starting to ship our Daiquiri Smart Glasses in, in volume. Um, those products were designed to be worn by workers in an industrial environment, have the safety certifications that go along with that. We also have a platform uh, for content creation and content uh, connection to other IT systems and to our devices. And the third pillar, I guess, of our approach is our ecosystem. So we're working with a range of ISVs and system integrators, solution providers, to actually make solutions that are useful in the workplace. And today I'm gonna to talk about some of those solutions and talk about some of the partnerships towards the end. So first case study just to refer to is one that a colleague of mine presented yesterday. So I'll give a very, very brief overview of it here. Just want to flash it back. It was a case study which we did start of this year in Berlin with Siemens Power and Gas. Um, so these guys are making these huge gas turbines. You can see one in the picture here, this big beast of a machine, 425 megawatts, burns gas, generates electricity. Some of the highest tech gas turbines that are available today. And for anybody who's ever put together a piece of IKEA furniture, I think you know the pain that can come with a, what looks to be a very simple uh, set of work instructions. Um, so keeping a team trained and organized in constructing these huge gas turbines is obviously a complex uh, and a time consuming and a costly challenge. So we worked with Siemens to train their 500 technicians who are working on this um, and to keep them trained so that they're all skilled to be able to do the various tasks that oper operationally they are required to do. Um, and in particular, what we used were AR work instructions. Um, in one specific part of the assembly, it was the gas burner assembly. So the, the piece of equipment that burned the gas and shoot the hot air into the turbine. Um, and what the guys were looking for here was to increase efficiency and reduce errors that normally occur in this process. Um, the study went very well. I mean, the, the drastic finding which we had, or the most dramatic finding rather, was the speed. So the time to completion for a novice user, um, so somebody who's within their first couple of months in the company, went from one day under guided instruction to under 45 minutes. Um, there were a couple of reasons for that, which the, the operators qualified. They said they felt empowered. They didn't have somebody looking over their shoulder. They weren't afraid to make a mistake and be criticized, this type of social effect. Um, I won't go into the details and the depth here. I just want to mention this in, in passing. In terms of efficiency, they found that using a linear automated training and automated process was more efficient because they got a more consistent um, repeatable process from, from engine to engine. So in terms of consistency and quality, um, it, it gave a better, better performance overall. And they found a reduction in error. I mean, the fact that people could do the task instead of a day in 45 minutes 
um, is evidence that they found it easier to actually progress through their, their, their tasks. The case study that I'm going to spend a little more time talking about today is another Siemens one that we've done together with Siemens up in Denmark in their plant up there where they assemble these huge wind turbines. So they've since merged with Gamesa, so it's Siemens Gamesa. Um, you know, in these turbines, a lot of the technology, a lot of the complex mechanical and electrical systems are inside the hub, which is that rectangular structure that you see in the picture, um, which is, you know, the ceiling is as tall as this room here, uh, full of uh, mechanical and electrical equipment, a very, very complex area. So we created a tool with Siemens to allow the inspectors to enter that hub to identify errors and to pin them in 3D to facilitate the whole snagging and follow-up of that on workflow. So the challenge was, and I guess there are pieces of these pictures which are blurred due to some sensitive information, so that's it. not to be wondering in case you think your eyesight is deceiving you, but to explain the challenge, um, inspectors would review a system report on their quality system in the office. Um, they would read through the system report of what has been done on the asset, on the wind turbine. Um, they may print out some, some notes or some tasks, and they walk away from the computer in their office with some papers, with a digital camera, and walk several hundred meters to the wind turbine. They take a flashlight with them to, to get some clarity on some of the objects from time to time. So what the guys did inside the turbine is they did an external inspection of the, the outside surfaces, and then inside the hub, looked at the mechanical, the electrical, and identified errors pretty much from memory from what they'd read on the system report, but also reminded by their notes. Um, if they identified snags, so things which weren't as they should be, typically what they did is they took a digital photograph with the camera and pasted a piece of red sticky tape on the snag. They then remembered the snag, and when they went back to the office, they would create a report. So they opened up Microsoft Excel, created a document. Everybody loves writing big reports, right? And spent some time writing reports, imported digital pictures from the, from the camera, and then submitted that as the work report. There was a reinspection process which would happen in a following time. Obviously, people would be tasked to repair the snags, and then some of the inspectors would have to revisit and check that the snags have been completed satisfactorily or not. So the pain points with the existing process today was that there was a potential for inconsistency. Um, inconsistency in the sense that the operator was memorizing a task, was going then to the site, had some pieces of paper, some cameras in their hands, so there was a cognitive loading by having bits and pieces and photographs and sticky tape and different things. And then they memorized those errors and came back and wrote down a report. And you know, that process is prone to inconsistency. Um, there are some challenges with identifying and tracking snags. So when they were documenting the location of snags, the guys had a grid system. So it was like A, B, C, D, one, two, three, like a, a grid reference that you might see on a map. Um, and there were some problems with that because it can be subjective. So for me, I'm gonna go from A to C, somebody else might divide it into five zones, et cetera. So it was a little bit subjective, and it was very, very hard if a shift ended during an inspection for one inspector to describe to the next person where they had finished and where the next person must start. So that had led to inconsistencies also. So there were the problems which we tried to address working with them. Um, we developed an AR app which facilitated inspections. So the key features was that it guided the inspector through a process. So there were a number of items which needed to be inspected were presented as a, as a virtual menu through the AR interface. The inspector could progress through them in a linear fashion or could pick and choose in any fashion as long as they completed the various tasks. Once the inspector identified an, a snag, they would place a 3D marker. And this, I guess, is where the, the AR added a lot of value. So we allowed the, the inspector to place snags in 3D space, which the device could articulate to anybody else. So you put on the same device or a different device, walk into that asset and you will see the snags placed as 3D pins. Um, we also implemented some features that allowed the categorization of those snags. So through a, a voice to text interface, um, within typically three to four seconds, 
the inspector could have actually categorized the entire snag and described what the type of action required was. Um, and the beauty of all of that, that it was, it was generating the document back on the server as the inspector was going through this process. So that by the time they went back to the office, the report is already written. Um, the hands-free interface on the device prompted the user to take a photograph occasionally where that was relevant. Um, so the report was there with serial numbers, photographs, and a detailed report based on what all the actions were taken and snags identified. Uh, this workflow obviously gave hands-free, so the user, the inspector didn't need to carry a camera, didn't need to carry bits and pieces of paper, didn't need to carry sticky tape and, and, and physically interact with the hub. Um, the report was generated, as I said, which saved a lot of time, facilitated handovers and facilitated reinspections re because it removed that subjective description of where snags were located in 3D space. The time savings were pretty significant. So overall, from end to end, the process was 40% faster. Um, in the documentation part, there was over 700% savings because the inspector just needed to download the report and review it rather than create the report post-inspection. Um, what they found was the inspection was higher quality because it was more consistent. People were following more rigorously through the instructions, but also tracking rigorously where the snags were. And in terms of operational efficiency, it became easier to schedule because handovers could happen and reinspections were possible without more detailed briefing between operators. I guess one final thing that I didn't mention, I'll maybe just zip back to it, but we also measured technology acceptance with the users. So we worked closely with the inspectors who were actually doing the work in partnership to develop the app. And their net promoter scores are very high, and a lot of the metrics which we designed in the trial came very, very positive that it was beyond technology acceptance into technology adoption, which is obviously a key challenge in AR today. Do the workers actually want to use it rather than something being management push? So this was something that the workers said they wanted more of. They thought it was a huge benefit to them in their job. They preferred to use it. So they were pulling on management to get more of this. So in terms of partnerships and alliances, you know, our, our focus to scale out these solutions and bring them elsewhere um, is very much a partnership and alliances approach, right? We're not gonna do all of this ourselves. Of course, we know that. Um, you know, we're working with Siemens, Autodesk, IBM. We've some recent announcements with Siemens in terms of asset tracking integrations with Maximo um, and Watson. So that we, we're working with a, an initial cohort of 15 customers um, to integrate IBM solutions and to, to bring different workflows and use cases to some enterprise customers through that partnership. Autodesk, we've shown a number of times some integrations with BIM 360, superimposition of 3D scans and models of assets for construction and other use cases. You know, for us, getting data and content in a seamless way into our devices is implicit in actually bringing further solutions and scaling them out to the market. We're working also with other groups in Siemens, so it's XHQ and Team Center, so for PLM tools and for access to data within factories. Um, so our strategy is to bring these tool sets as connectors to, to system integrators, to partners, um, to work together to get more and more powerful enterprise solutions, professional grade AR solutions to our customers. I showed three pictures on the bottom from some of our European partners, so SHM in Norway, Itanix, in the Netherlands and Realmore in Italy, where we've had relatively recent case studies in a variety of different applications. The Realmore was at Aprilia Racing in Italy for pit operations on their, their MotoGP motorcycles. Itanix was a BIM use case, and the SHM use case is connectivity for aquaculture. Um, there are many more examples. I highlight these. There are some of the more visible ones. Um, you know, for us, the key partnerships are the ones which will help to get more useful enterprise solutions in customers' hands. Um, we have partnerships with Dell, who we are partnering with to, uh, to bring desk-based AR and, and further versions of mobile-based AR with. Um, Flex, our contract manufacturing partner, we're working with as well in terms of uh, manufacture of our devices, but also some collaborations. Um, you know, Obviously, we're here. We're part of the ecosystem of the augmented world. 
So we're here to, uh, to partner with people and to, to, to bring solutions to, to customers. So thank you.